Sherry Rosenbaum, and I'm going to be your MC today. I will try to entertain you a little bit, but let me tell you about our first session. So welcome to Strategic Marketing for the Modern MSP. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Acrona CMO, Michael Callahan. He brings over 20 years of marketing leadership, mostly in cybersecurity. Strategically, he has helped position numerous products and companies in existing categories and launched new categories. His experience includes startups like email security vendor Cofence and established companies such as Jupiter and HP. This has given him a large company um, perspective of operating at scale while maintaining a scrappy, fast-paced attitude. Please welcome to the stage Michael Callahan. So when that expectation set that scrappy and fast-paced, what do you do? Like, do you like run up here as quick as you can? Um, so thank you all for, for taking the time to do this today. I hope that this is um, maybe a little bit strategic and then also practical, right? So what I hope like you leave with is two or three ideas. You say, oh, I could go do this, or I could go do this as soon as you get back. But let's start with what Sherry said. So if you hadn't downloaded the app, have you downloaded it now? Everyone? All right, let's do, a, um, let's do our first poll. We'll see how well this works. Who is responsible for your company's marketing? So go to the arrow on the right bottom is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Room one. We should have like trialed this first, right? This is like real time early access products. Wow, look at this. Maybe you go next door. Next door is the, I don't know, it's the sales room. All right, so it looks like people have, just, has anybody not voted? Looks like everybody just about has. So um, interesting. So you, what was that? Did you guys see that flash? Anyway, it looked like 67% said that you guys are personally responsible. Um, one thing I would recommend is, um, so that tool is really cheap. Um, try it. When, when, you're, when you're talking, either you're doing internal presentations, if, you, if it makes sense, or um, if you're talking to audiences, like in this setting, it's a good way to just get people like, out of the, well, this is a lecture, and I'm just going to sit here and listen for 30 or 40 minutes. So um, hopefully that's one tip you guys take away. OK, so let's start with, what's the biggest question or biggest way you could start a presentation like this? How about, what's a brand? Right? So you guys didn't know we were going to be a little bit philosophical today. Um, you may or may not have seen this. This is, this is my own words. You've probably seen variations of this. <clears throat> but to me, it's this. Right? It's everything. It's how you show up. It's how, when someone comes into your lobby, how they're greeted. Um, you know, do you have a person greeting them, and you're friendly? Or is it, you know, please fill out this iPad, and someone may come out to get you, you know, in the next 15 or 20 minutes. But it's everything. right? It's how people answer the phone. It's, um, you know, there's a, there's a phrase that everything communicates and everything does, and it communicates something, and it's positive or negative. Uh, I've, used, I've used this idea with many of the teams that I've managed about moments of truth. And moments of truth are these times when um, someone interacts with something that you do, right? So you create, it could be a product, it could be a marketing message, it could be your website, it could be anything that you do, and there's a moment of truth, and it's binary. <clears throat> the result of that is, it's either yes or no. So whatever your company is, right? They, enter, they, they go to your website. I'll just give an example. They go to your website, and it takes five seconds to load instead of two. That's a moment of truth. And someone's like, yeah, I'm going to go on to something else. Or they, they send you an email, <clears throat> and um, you don't get back to them. It's a moment of truth. It's either yes or no. Or you get those dreaded ones, which I, I've had, for some reason this week, I've had more than I usually get. The email that you get, and you try to respond to it, but it's like a no reply at something dot something. And you're like, well, that doesn't help me at all. Now I've got to go search for like a customer care number or contact me number. And it's these, these moments of truth are what determine ultimately how your brand is perceived. So think about, think about all of those little things um, um, because they really are binary. So um, the next, next thing I want to do, so that's what a brand is to me. Um, let's show the power of it, right? So you guys may or may not be there, depending on where you are in your journey as a business owner uh, or as a marketing professional, um, but I'll show you the, the power if you do this well. We're going to take a quiz. Everybody got their paper and pencil? Or it's in the app? It's not in the app. <clears throat> I'm going to show you 
just a color. No other context at all, just a color. You guys tell me who it is. Anyone? You don't have to wait. Tiffany? Tiffany? Anyone else? I don't want to be <clears throat> sexist at all, but I would say it is Tiffany, and it's glad I'm happy that you knew. So the rest of you um, have some work to do if you're not female to learn what this color means. It is Tiffany and Company. Uh, of course, they have gifts for both men and women. Um, but think about that. So some of this could be the, the color on the screen, right? It's a little bit, it's a little more green than the actual Tiffany blue. But think about that. Like that's a moment of truth, right? When someone like you're given either, at, you know, whoever you are, you're given this gift and it comes in that little bag or that little box. Ho holy smokes, right? And that's the power, that's the power of, of a strong brand. Let me do, I'll do two more for you. Who do you think this is? Who'd you say? I heard Coke, I heard... Ferrari. Ferrari, ah, it could be Ferrari. It's, it's, not, it's not quite as orange. It's a, or, Ferrari's a little bit more orange than that, just a little bit. It's Coke, right? <clears throat> Let me give you the last one. So this one is not a color but just an, a, a symbol. Ah, there we go, we're a technology room here. Um, so we all know Cisco, but we don't really drink a lot of Coke. Um, yeah, so it is Cisco. So the, the, what, I, what I'm trying to show in that is just how powerful that can be if you do right, and, and know that it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, how long has Coke been around? For 150 years? Tiffany, probably 100. Cisco, when did Cisco start? Maybe in the 60s? Give or take, big before that? Maybe later than that, I don't know. So 50 years, let's just say roughly 50 years. So it takes, it takes a while. But if you think about those moments of truth and you keep building on them and you're consistent, you'll end up with a, you know, with a really strong brand. So how do, you, how do you create a strong brand? To me, there is one, there's one way to do this. Clearly and consistently, how you solve your customers' problems. That is, that is absolutely it. I have seen tens and hundreds of millions of dollars wasted by people getting really fancy, trying to overthink it, by trying to be too witty, too creative, too whatever. And really what people want to know is, do you solve a problem that I have? Everybody has a problem. That, that's what you're doing. Everybody has a problem that you're trying to solve regardless of what it is. It could be as basic as like, my problem is I'm hungry. So how do I solve that? Well, someone probably has food somewhere, as, a, as a, like a super simple example. But using that idea of problem marketing um, or marketing to a problem, uh, it will put you, it will differentiate you from at least half of the pack. So think about the problems, and we're going to go into how you do this uh, in a second. Um, so what's the next step in creating a strong brand is C number one, of course. <clears throat> I used to write go to number one. I realized that that was like old programming stuff, and only I got it and nobody else did. <laughs> um, so let's talk about a couple definitions real quick. This, this, will, this always seems to be like never-ending debate among people, and it doesn't need to be because, frankly, it's not like, it's not the thing. <laughs> it's the, like, what's the difference between messaging and positioning? The thing is how you're executing and how you're getting, how you're getting your message across. But uh, brand, branding is that, oh, sorry, that, that was a question that was supposed to be there. Did you guys already get it, I guess? Yes. Wow, who was so proactive to do that? I didn't even mention it. Nice job. Do you know the difference between branding and positioning? So... We'll let that keep building, that's fun. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, see, that's not fair, because you guys read the screen that I just put up there a second ago. <laughs> that's the timing issue that we have to work on. <laughs> Although, at least 40% of you weren't paying attention to the screen, so. Um, anyway, so the, the difference between branding and positioning. So I'll talk about that a little bit. So let me, let's go back to the, the slide. So branding is your color, logo, font. Um, if you don't know, that originated with cattle, actually, about 100 years ago. And people were, they were marking their, um, um, they were branding their cattle. It was a brand, and that's, that's the origin of it. And then it became, uh, they used it on other things. Positioning is how you want people to think of you in the market, right? Are you uh, an enterprise player? Are you an SMB player? Are you super fast? Are you, so, whatever that is, that's position that you want, you want in people's heads. So, um, you know, you think of, um, I'm doing this off the top of my head, but like, Remember Hertz and Avis were always competing in rental cars. Um, I think it was Avis who said, we try harder. Right? That was kind of some of their positioning, is that they're like, we're not number one. We're number two in the space, but we try harder. And that's, that's you, you ended up thinking, figuring out where they were. The last piece is the messaging, which is another way of saying, that could be campaigns, right? So you've got the brand, you've got the color, you've got the logo, you've got the typeface, whatever that might be. You've got your position in the market, and then you have, what, how, do you, how do you deliver that in the messaging or in the creative? For campaigns. Um, so there are, okay, so I see there's a dot on this screen, so that means I ask another question, right? 
Where's my friend Sherry? Am I asking a polling question now? That was like my visual cue to not keep going and I missed the first one. Okay, so we have another poll, okay. Have you completed an intentional dumbly positioning? I'll let that keep building. The key word there is intentional. It's not really changing much, huh? You guys must have all voted. Oh. <laughs> what is intentional development? Okay, good. So it looks like probably what a quarter of you have roughly, and then a quarter uh, what is intentional development, and then the other half says no. Um, so you're in the right place. Um, so I'm going to go through a little bit of the steps you can go through on how to do this. But it is, it's really important to, to that positioning. Um, and at the, at the end, we'll talk about kind of priorities if, if we need to. But it's, it is important to do the messaging piece. So let me, let me go to what are the, what are the steps. <clears throat> Seems like a long list. I promise it's not going to be, well, I'll try to make it not boring. Um, if you guys have questions, you can, you can, we have a time at the end to do questions. But I'm happy to just take them. This shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a lecture just with me talking and you guys just sitting there. So this is the steps. We'll go through each nine of them, um, or all nine of them. This first one I'm going to use because it's so... It's such a good one to keep in mind, but it's creating your North Star guiding point. So what is that North Star that you use as a frame of reference to, uh, to make your decisions around? The best one I can think of, there, like there's hundreds of them, the best one I can think of is Nike. Their, their North Star is inspire the athlete within. And if you take a, a moment to think about that, you think like if you're on their website or you see advertisements or you go into a store or wherever it is, it's all back to this, right? You go into a store and every, it's all about the athlete within, not that we're all athletes, but there is an athlete within all of us. It may be little, it may be larger, but they're, they're North Stars. They make all their decisions on that. So if you like go into a Nike store, you'll see some of their mannequins, which are sometimes larger than life with the clothes on them and the shoes or the soccer kit or whatever. Um, uh, and it's inspirational. And it all goes back to this North Star. So they, they judge or they make their decisions. So they may do a campaign. They will at some point say, is this inspiring the athlete within? So we're going to run this during whatever whatever ad or, or whatever um, uh, event on TV. Is it inspiring the athlete? It's hard to do this. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, but try it, right? Try it. It's worth the exercise. And if nothing else, with your teams, when you do it, you'll get a lot of different views of like what they think the north star is of your company. Um, I, I did this once. Um, it, I was at actually at Juniper, it wasn't Jupiter, but it was Juniper. Um, and I did it individually with the executive team. Everybody had a different answer, which led to a bunch of other discussions. Right? Like, why do we all think that we're going in a different direction? And it actually, as a marketing professional, we, one of our roles is we can be the glue across the different functions. And that, this is a great way to do it, because we can say, we all need to get in the same page. And you use this sort of um, uh, uh, third party, almost like this idea of a North Star, to create that. It's a great way to bridge the teams together, small teams or large teams. OK, second piece was, sorry about that, was um, talk with your customers, your prospects, talk with your salespeople, um, uh, ask them. It, not, and not just like, hey, what works? Was that lead a quality lead or a junk lead? Or did that event work? Talk to them about, what are the problems? What problems are we solving? What, what are the problems that you're hearing? And, and the, usually or often, the answer will be something like, um, well, we're priced too high, or we don't have this feature. Try to pop them out of that a little bit and say, ask about the problem. What, what problem is it more than the, like the sales tactics? Like I, I separate those into these two groups of there's, this, there's problems that, the, that customers have, and then there's just like objections. Those are two different things. Really get them on what are the problems. And, and I'll show you some examples in here. We went through this at Acronis. Um, you guys are like our customers, like you're our customers, right, from the MSP or the, the uh, partner perspective. Um, we, do a, we do some on the end user, but I'm going to stick with this more on the MSP side. I went through the same exercise of what are the problems, and you'll see the ones that, that we came up with. Actually, that's the next piece here. So create a list of the top five to seven. After you do that and you talk with the partners, I mean, talk with the salespeople, prospects, customers. Prospects are a little bit harder because they think you're selling them, but if you can get enough or you can get a few that are willing to talk to you, it's going to be beneficial. Um, but I did this and talked to probably 100 from different, in different formats, uh, in person, on the phone. I sent a couple of surveys. Um, these are what I, what I found at Acronis. And then hopefully you guys would look at these and go, yep, those are the ones I have because you were the customer or the potential customer in this case. So this is what we, we came up with. Um, 
there was some concern about technology failures. There was um, uh, yeah, some, some risk aversion, right? Like you don't want to try something that isn't, you know, has been out in the market and tested over years and years and years. Um, there was a lot of complexity that came up as a problem. There was um, this idea of um, there's, you feel comfortable now and you don't want to go into an area that you're not comfortable with, like your business is working, you come in, you do your stuff, you go home at the end of the day, but losing that control. Um, talent, talent was probably one that came up more often than not. I would say that's probably always in the top one or two, is finding good talent, keeping good talent, training talent. Uh, and then the last one was, of course, margins, right? How, how do you, and so think about this. So this is the problems. This is the problems that, that when I was doing the research came up with that you guys have. These aren't sales objections, right? Some of, I mean, you could, some of them maybe spin a tiny bit, but these are like business problems. And so when we're thinking of, well, how do we communicate to you guys that we can help you solve your problems, it comes back to these. And so we do that marketing, that messaging around what the problems are. You guys, yours are going to be completely different than us, but these are the ones that we had. Is this, let me just kind of get some nods or some head shaking our hands up. Are these the problems you guys have? Did I miss anything obvious? <laughs> like, are you like, how could you possibly not know about, we really wanted orange juice for breakfast, that's our biggest problem. All right, I'm gonna assume that these, these are it. So let's go back to the list. So we are, we are working our way through. We're on um, number four. This is really important because so far this has been mostly internal. I mean, you're asking some customers and partners about their, like their problems, but this next one, the, 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 from the perspective of the customer, you've gotta remember that when you go in, and you're trying to sell to the end to our mutual end user. Um, someone came in before you to sell them, and someone came in after them, and they went to a website, and they went to an event, and so it's not an isolation. As much as we all think we're the center of the universe, we are totally not, right? We have a like I'll give you an example. We have a a wonderful partner portal for you guys. It has a ton of really really strong content on it. Um, Prepackaged email like nurture campaigns, uh, web banners. Um, uh, landing pages, emails you can send, um, data sheets you can co-brand, a lot of really good information. So we send messages out to you guys and say, hey, you should check out the partner portal with some new stuff. We're one of like, what, 30 that you get? <laughs> that, that, that all the other partners are saying, oh, you should go to our portal. And, you should. and so we have to find a way, one, to differentiate, but also um, know that that's what your world is like. So when you are doing this for your own company, think, what else are they seeing that may be similar to what I'm trying to offer them, and how, how do I differentiate? So I'll, I'll do this. Again, I'm going to keep using Acronis examples. So I looked at who are, our, um, who are our competitors. So because we have this fantastic platform that has this single agent, these applications that sit on it, uh, that um, does all of these different functions, and none of them are dependent on the other. You can use them all independently. We went in and said, well, who are our competitors? Who, who would you guys be looking at if you're choosing a vendor to go with? Well, we've got security ones, we've got backup, and then we've got you know, the management side. Um, and so we have to look at what those all look like so that we know as you're looking, you're gonna, you're gonna counter that, we need to, we need to uh, consider that. And so this is, this is what I found, right? So this is like, if you can imagine this, I, I pulled this out of a deck that I did with our senior team and the board that showed how we were coming up with some of the messaging we're coming up with. Um, you're, you could almost use this as a template, right? But you can see the, like, how, we're, how we're going through this. So what we found was pretty dry, serious, very descriptive. Um, in our space in particular, there's a lot of fear, and, and I'll show you that uh, in a second. Um, pretty consistent um, style between them. In fact, it's, sometimes it's hard to, if, you, if I covered up the logo, you may not know who they were. Um, and there's a very similar brand personality. And, and I'll show you a way to pull that apart and figure out what yours should be. But this is what it looked like visually to us. So these were just four. I did, I did eight when I was doing this for, the, for, the, um, for Acronis. But I would say if you, other than Bitdefender, which is a little bit different than this, if you covered up the upper left green Veeam logo, the Kasei logo, and the Data logo, um, and you guys may be using these, so that, understand this is not like a criticism of any of those, because you, sh you should use them, and we give you the choice that you can kind of use whatever solution you want. But if you covered that up, it looks about the same, doesn't it? I mean, it's all like bluish green, a, sh a gradient from one side to the other, but it's kind of all the same. And so thinking about that from your, your customer's perspective, um, you're my customer in this one, I'll keep saying that, um, how do I differentiate? How do I just not fall into that same place um, where you just kind of 
blow right past me and think, uh, not interesting, not interesting. It didn't stick out, didn't stand out. There was no compelling message. None of these really talk to a problem, right? If we move back to that beginning of what is the problem that the customers have, um, let me just take an example. Uh, so Bitdefender, again, I'm, I'm sure they're doing well. <clears throat> Global leader in cybersecurity. It's not really a problem, right? It's kind of about them. So does that help you telling what they, what they're, like they, how, how highly they think of themselves? Uh, I'll, I'll do just one more. So this one in Datto says, take your IT business to scale. That hints at a problem, but do any of you get up in the morning and think, man, my number one problem is scale? Uh, maybe. I mean, if you're really, if like, like you've got a bunch of problems that are connected to scale, or that you're, but usually you don't think of scale as a problem. You're thinking like, how do I get talent? How do I improve margins? How do I get more productivity per workload? How do I sign up more customers? It's not really like, wow, how do I get a rack of servers so that I can like hold, handle all this data? That, it's, not, it's not like that. That's not the problem that you're, you're really solving. So um, I would probably communicate that differently. Anyway, so think about it from the perspective of your customers. <clears throat> So then you get to, so what is your style and your tone? There's a great um, mechanism that I've used for this over the years that uh, hopefully you guys will like it as well. Um, and it's called an archetype. It was, it was developed by Carl Jung in psychology in the, I think in the 40s or 50s. Um, and here's a, it's been applied to brands, but I'll show you what it looks like. In the very center, um, there's these four, um, like these four things that drive us. And in fact, if you, if you really think about it, like for just for yourself personally, if you think about this, um, you probably are aligned with one of these. So I'm going to do my best to read this. So the, the upper left is provide structure to the world. Uh, you're in for paradise. I'm kind of reading clockwise. Um, leave a mark on the world. Thank you for making that bigger. That's awesome. Um, connect with others. So if you think about yourself, you probably are in one of those. There's probably a little bit of like overlap, but you're generally like, yeah, this is kind of what drives me. Like, uh, to give you an example, like in, in mine of all these, I'm probably more providing structure, right? Like my closet's pretty neat. When, when I eat ice cream, it's all like, like, like one level down. Like I don't dig into the very bottom on the side. My wife is the complete opposite. We have fights all the time about how you stack a dishwasher. I'm like, of course you put, the, you put all of the silverware just in a line. How could you not do that? It doesn't just get thrown in. Glasses don't go on the bottom, glasses go on the top. Um, you guys probably have something in there similar. So if you think about one of those four, it, it, it is what's driving you. It's also creating like your brand, right? That's what creates your brand. Well, you can apply that to companies as well. And if you do it well and you do it consistently, you will see that um, it's, a, it's a stronger brand. And you think about some of these. Um, I have some examples in our space, but I'll give you an example. Like if you think of connect with others uh, and you go through enjoyment and then the actual archetype and that one is called a jester. Any, anyone, any come to mind when you think about that? I'll give you an example. So Geico, do you guys know Geico? Right in that space, right? Which, which is not surprising because it's connect with others, right? They're an insurance company. They want to be your partner. They want to be in there and, and so they do it funny. Uh, M&M's is another good uh, consumer brand that's in that jester space. So think about your companies. But don't overthink this, right? Because th this is actually one of the more fun exercises you can do. But you can also just get stuck just going in circles. And people go, well, but we're a little bit of this. But remember that one time we had that innovative feature? So we're definitely changing the world. Use it and try to get directionally where you should go. When I did this, and remember thinking about how, thinking about in context of your, your, your customers, um, this is where we look. This is what the space that when I put those competitors before up, this is where everyone landed for us. What's interesting on this is most people in our space, most companies, landed as the hero. And you think about that and you think, of course, because they're all like, we can stop that breach. We have the best MI and ML and AI that you could possibly need and we're gonna stop everything. We'll come in and rescue you. You, get, you have a problem, we're gonna be in there and protect that data or we're gonna make sure that you don't get audited for compliance. And it's, what's interesting about that is it's all about them, for one. So they're coming in as a hero and it's, they've, they've done it pretty well, right? I mean, they all come across like that. I mean, we saw the one, what was Bitdefender, the global leader in something or other, security. Um, they're all right down there. So when we did this, we said, well, what's true to us? What is it that we don't have to like, it's not like aspirational, it's like, who are you really? Who, who, where do we really land on this? And 
it may not be surprising that we ended up mostly, there, so I should have done these a different color, it's a tiny bit creator, a tiny bit outlaw. Not much, it's like 5% of each of those. It is 90% uh, on Ally, which isn't, again, isn't surprising because we work with you, right? Our, like we partner with you all to make sure that you're successful. So our archetype is really about providing structure, giving that, that platform that gives you the choice, lets you decide, do you want to do, you know, do you want to have one agent? Do you want to have 50 agents? But we give you that choice in the platform, provide that structure, give you back that control, and let you control, you know, your business. Um, and so our archetype is ally. So when you see messaging from us, it'll be about how can we work together? How can we help you? How can we, um, how can we do this as a community? Um, you know, an event like Summit here, I mean, that's what this is, right? All of us working together, you guys telling us what works, what doesn't work. We try to figure out how to put that in the products so that you can have better solutions. So far, so good? Yep. Okay. We should have another quiz coming up, no? Maybe not. Okay, so that's the archetype. Um, it, you can search archetype if you're interested in doing more. It's, it's really, um, it's actually, uh, like the North Star exercise, it's actually an interesting one to do with a leadership team, either like the most senior leadership team or within a function team, because everyone will have a different idea. And so think about the power, though. If you can get everyone aligned behind the North Star, which it's not easy to do that. It takes multiple meetings to do that. And you get everyone aligned behind an archetype, it's pretty powerful, right? So now you know where you're going and you know how you show up, how you come across, and then, then it gets into some of the easier stuff. It's harder work, but it's more, it's just, it's execution at that point. Okay. Um, what's your style tone? That's what we did. So develop a unique creative design. Um, what you wanna do, and th again, this depends on where you are in your evolution, but you wanna have something that you can own. And I'll go back, maybe actually we'll go back and just show that slide. Anything unique or creative here? Not really. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it the bit defender stands out a little bit, probably just because I picked that one um, to, to show that there, it's all about them. But in terms of the, desi the design, if you compare like Bitdefender to some of the other security, they all just kind of blend in. So what can you own, right? What can you own? And I'll show you how we, what we came to, and I think you saw this in the, the keynote yesterday. Let me figure out where we were again. Uh, okay. So do it around, think about the problem, right? You're solving a problem. <clears throat> so I like the idea of problem and solution, right? So you can do that. We chose to do it, and I'll, I'll show you the creative, sort of a left and right, or left and right, like uh, problem solution. You can do it multiple ways. Uh, you wanna have some descriptive messaging, um, something that's relatable for us. We, you know, we wanted to update us to be, have more photography, something more current, not just illustrations. Um, in our case, this was the really key, key piece. So you probably saw this yesterday, or What's today? Tuesday, yeah, yesterday. Um, as I was developing our design, we had a lot of, well, here's some cool coloring, or here's this design or that design. And what really, really stuck out to me was our whole product strategy, and really the company strategy, is around this idea of simplicity. And it, it turns out that in the product, you have those little toggle switches. That's totally unique to us. No one else has that. No one else has anything where you can go, I want to turn on URL filtering and backup or I wanna have some advanced automation stuff and um, uh, DLP, nobody, nobody has that. So that was, that was like wonderful for me as a marketing person to be able to say, I've got this visual that nobody else has that I can just, I can use everywhere. And so you'll see us, you'll see us doing that and it conveys this idea of simplicity. And so we, we came up with, you know, you've got this, this is how simple it is, a switch. You probably have something like that in your company. There's probably something that you guys did, it may have been when you first started that made you unique, See if you can turn that into a visual somehow or something that people can remember. I guarantee, if you, if you think of those, those like websites that I just put up there, they all kind of blend together. And then if, pretend like you weren't our partner, right, if you're a prospect, um, and you saw this switch and you were able to go, my problems get solved and it's this, that's going to totally grab your attention, right? It's not going to, like you're not going to just send in an order at that point. You still want to talk to someone. But in terms of differentiating and grabbing your attention, it's something that we can own. So think about what that is from your own, your own um, companies. We, and so we show it a little, a little further where we say, look, this is how easy it is. So I'm getting a little bit into like the demo part of what we do when we, when we show it, but we say, look, it's a switch, right? You, you wanna add DLP? It's a switch, oops, it's a switch. That's something that we can own. And in fact, what you probably will see, I'm talking with our head of, our CTO Oleg, um, we can own that even more and brand it and 
I think it's easy, but to me, I just say, well, it's just copy paste, right? You just change that color green to blue throughout the whole product and it's now a Cronus blue. Um, that's what I, what I wanna do though. So that's like the next step of this is making that even more, um, more ownable. So in the product, the color is blue. There's a little A on the actual um, the, the button. It's kind of like if any of you have been in, if you've been in data centers before, um, who was it that had like the, 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 their, their server was like a really bright green? I can't remember who that is right now. But I remember going in and you see like all of these like just silver servers and then you have like this really bright green one and you're like, that totally stands out. Who is that? Same idea, right? Brand some, branded visually so you, you can own something. So I'm gonna just do a quick check here with people. So this clock just went from like 10 minutes to zero. <laughs> Did I just go over, way over? <laughs> How over am I? Get out. This was fun, right? This, I, this was good, I was having, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> what time does this session end, actually? Because we had Q&A at the end. It, it told me in the five minutes, who's saying that? <laughs> Is that like someone in the room or just a part? <laughs> All right, so let me keep going. It seemed interesting, didn't it? Like, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> you guys weren't leaving. <laughs> um, all right, so the creative design, problem-based messaging. So this is how we did it. Again, you guys can create it however you want, but we, we incorporated the switch, the toggle switch, and then this idea of having a problem on one side and a solution on the other. In practice, it looks like this, right? So we tried to go back, remember those problems that I listed before, where you guys are like, man, it's, things are just way too complex. I'm having a hard time with margins. Um, are you guys taking pictures of this and it's gonna be out there before I even do the campaign? <laughs> Please don't use this before I use it. <laughs> Great, now we gotta come up with a new one. Um, too many vendors, take back control, uh, train security staff, we make it easy. So you get the idea, like this is very differentiated and I guarantee you can come up with the same thing. And I'm happy, if you guys want, send me an email. I'm happy to spend time with people and just help you at least think through some of this. I can't do a complete like valuation or redo of your whole strategy, but I can, I can help a little bit. Or outside, it may look like this. But the point is, like, how different is that, right? You're going to, you're, even, if, even if you aren't in the market, you're at least gonna like notice that and say, well, what can you do? Okay, tactical execution is the next one. You guys, you can look at this. I think we send these slides anyway. Here's the last, the point I'll make on the very bottom of this is probably, well, where do I start? Go to the website. Everybody goes to the website. Focus on the website, get that message right on your homepage. Invest in a good SEO or SEM company to help you optimize so that you do show up in the results, whatever that positioning is that you've developed, so you do show up in the results. But that I would go there first. It's, it's always seductive to go, oh, there's this event that we're gonna have a tabletop and it's like, it's gonna have this cool banner and all the sales reps wanna go, like, that is so easy to do that because people feel like they're doing something. The return on that is gonna be a lot less in, until you get this sorted out on the website and the SEO team. Uh, and then the last place is measurements. I just pulled two that we look at. I look at this all the time. How many leads are we generating? Um, what kind of traffic we need to the website? Are they, con are they converting over? Build your brand awareness. Okay, so I didn't have a chance to ask me anything because I'm done, right? So I'm looking at Sherry. Two minutes? Oh, two questions. So pp at acronis.com, I don't know if do you guys remember that from yesterday? That's Patrick's, our CEO's email addresses, pp at acronis. He, he had the question about the Easter egg. Did any of you answer him? So I'm gonna tell him that the cutoff was this right now. <laughs> like anything that comes in after this time. But in the video we showed the Easter egg was um, in, this, in the, uh, the report screen, we were showing like the different, like how many backups did you have, how many threats stopped, all that the date on it was actually the date from Back to the Future, right? So the movie Back to the Future, that was the, so it was like October 25th, 1985. And at 11.50, the voting closed. You cannot send him an email now. <laughs> okay, so real questions, so two questions. Anybody that asks gets a, uh, what, do, what do we have as a, as a nice gift, a t-shirt or a, a t-shirt? We have a t-shirt for anybody. Yeah, so from an international perspective, we're from Holland, we're selling your product for 15 years. How do you make sure that all the good stuff that you create with your team is for like 100% available, it is available, but you know, yep. that we can translate that to our local market in yeah. Holland. Yeah, so the, if you didn't hear all of that, it was how do, how do we take what we do and make sure that it's available to you. Um, go to the partner portal. There is so much good information on that partner portal. It is a, it's wonderful. Um, we will continue to evolve it. As you guys give us feedback, we'll continue to build more, but it's really cool. Like I, the, probably the best example is go to the one that's, it's an email security kit, and it literally has like, a two-step drip campaign. I mean, you can make as many steps in the drip as you want, but you don't, like, you could send out a message to your whole database 10 minutes. 
at most, right? You've got it, it automatically puts your name in it, you put your list of who you want it to go to, hit send, and it goes. The partner portal has a ton of really good information. It is, we, we invest a lot in the technology behind that. I can't remember the name now. It's like the MM or Mind something. Yeah, thank you, Florence. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that person's not here, sorry. Um, but it's a, it's a good technology. We'll keep, we'll keep advancing it, but definitely go to the partner portal. Okay, one question. We have one time for one more. No other, is there more than a t-shirt? What else do we have, a t-shirt and what? <laughs> Sunglasses, T-shirt and sunglasses. Uh, so that it was that one back there. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we should have umbrellas today. <laughs> Those are really expensive when it rains. All right. So you talk about simplicity and how Kronos tries to keep things as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. What can we as MSPs do to also implement that simplicity to create some sort of differentiation against kind of like what we do and what like in we your, offer? Like in your messaging? Yeah. So I'm going to be a little bit broad on this, but I would say... For you, if you're delivering a service and you're typically, you guys are working with SMBs, it's like good, better, best, right? This goes back to like old marketing and positioning, like here's a good solution, here's better, and here's best. Make it simple like that. Give them three choices. They'll always choose the middle one, or 90% of the time, but give them those choices so they feel like, your customers feel like they have some sort of um, involvement in the decision. But package it like that. Package it up so it's super, it's the, the, what they're buying is simple. What we're trying to do is make the technology simple. What you guys can do is make the choices simple for the, for the customer. Okay. Thank you all. I'm going to give it back to Sherry to take us into the next section. Okay. Thank you.